You are welcome once again to Social Studies class. Today happens to be the second time I'm coming to you since you began the topic promoting political stability in Ghana. From our previous lesson, we've learned about democracy. We've realized that before we can promote political stability in Ghana, we should operate on the principles of democracy. So we, we've learned about where democracy came from and how we can promote it. So today we are moving on to the importance of democracy. Since Ghana is a democratic state, what are some of the benefits are we getting? That's what we are going to look at today. So one importance I would like to talk about is democracy. Yes, one importance of democracy is democracy ensures constitutional rule. Democracy ensures constitutional rule. Yes, democracy ensures constitutional rule because democracy offers so many forums for different countries to rule themselves. You can talk of free and fair election. You can talk of rule of law, which was pro proposed by A.V. Darcy. Yes, this man said, in all things, in every person, the law, but not any other means. So democracy seems to be that people are ruled according, accordingly in the state. They are ruled according to the law of a state. Yes, so democracy ensures constitutional rule. Good. Also, the press, also, offers the, the, the opportunity for the people to criticize the government and put it on its toes. So when the, the government is going astray, the people alert him through the press. So democracy ensures constitutional rule. Another point is it protects Yes, it protects the rights and freedoms of the people. Yes, in a democratic state where we have a workable constitution, there is some institutional safeguards. When I say institutional safeguards, they are the institution responsible to educate the people on their rights and also fight against human rights abuses. So such institutions like, like the SRAG, Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. We can also talk of um, DOPSI, Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit. Yes, all these are institutional safeguards under the Constitution that fight against human rights abuses. We can also talk of the judiciary. When we talk of judiciary, we are talking about the courts. Yes, so anyone that abuses your rights needs to be resolved to one of these safeguards. They are the very institution responsible for dealing with human rights abuse cases. So the constitution established all these institutions to fight for human rights and against human rights abuses. Good. The next point is it allows for peaceful change of, of government. Yes, 
democracy allows for peaceful change peaceful change of government in what sense now when you use ghana for instance ghana is a democratic state good every four years we vote and elect or select our leaders every four years it is because ghana is a democratic state that established the constitution and the constitution says that for every four years we should call for fresh election and choose or select our own leaders peacefully so any party that loses election simply means that the people are not satisfied with their performance so it paved way for for people to select their preferred leaders for us to change our government in a peaceful manner through election good So we can also talk of yes, democracy facilitates. Accountability. <laughs> yes, democracy affords or calls for the government to render an account to the people, being a budgetary, you know, issues, be on national issues, how the people are being governed. The, the government are called <laughs> to render an account. For example, for example, in Ghana. The president is required by law to deliver the, the State of Nations address on the floor of parliament. This is in the form of what? Accountability. Rendering services. Rendering an account to the people. That is what is meant by accountability. Okay, the last one is it enhances Local participation in government. It enhances local participation in government. Yes, the constitu the constitution gives the right to the local people to earn their views through elections, through the press or the media. They constructively criticize the government too. They, they bring out their opinion through the media. In so doing, they are participating in government. So these and many more are some of the importance of democracy. So let's come to today's topic. Yes, from my explanation from the previous lesson, we've realized that before we can promote democracy, there should be an existence of what? Political parties. So today let's talk about political parties. Okay, political parties. Ghana consists of a lot of political parties. We can talk of MPP, we, we can talk of NDC, we can talk of CP, we can talk of PP. So, why are they called political parties? Is there anything that differs them between other parties? The answer is yes. Now, when you talk of political parties, political party is an organized group of people who strive to capture political power through election with the view of ruling or controlling the affairs of the state. It can also be defined as a group of people with the same ideology, with the aim of capturing political parties, sorry, capturing political power through election to run or control or steer the affairs of the state. That is what is meant by political party. 
So, politika. Political parties. political parties are organized group of people who strive to capture political power through the election with the aim of ruling or controlling the affairs of the state or country. Yes, it can also be defined as a group of people with the same ideology who, tra who, who strive to capture political power through election with the aim of controlling the affairs of the states. They are group with a common idea. Good. So let's look at some registered political parties in Ghana. So examples are examples are so we have New Patriotic Party NPP. We can talk of N. DC. We can talk of P P P. We can talk of C P P. Good. These are some of the examples of political party. So let's look at their characteristics. Why some parties are not political parties? What what are some of the characteristics? So characteristics. Of political party. One. So these are some of the characteristics of political party. The first point is that every political party must have national character. The underlying word is national character. So when you talk of national character, it simply means that uh, sorry, it simply means that political party must its membership to cut across all the regions. And it shouldn't be based on ethnicity, regions, religion, beliefs, and other sectional uh, connotations. The next point is all political parties must be registered under the law by the Electoral Commission. Only Electoral Commission, the CE, has the right by law to register a political party. The leaders or founding members of a political party must qualify as a member of parliament or hold national position. Only Ghanaians can donate, contribute or sponsor political parties in Ghana. The last one is political parties must have branches in all the regions. That is, these and many more are some of the characteristics of political parties as stated in the 1992.3 chapter 55 to be precise from cross 4 to 10. Good. So I'll end here but before that take this an assignment. So take this as an assignment. The question says in your own words give five functions of political parties in Ghana. So go and think of the functions of political parties. That is all that I have for you for today. Thanks very much.